yo, what's up, NGS? I am Murda, and special guest joining me tonight is my good friend Ragnarok. Uh, we have a Division D West matchup for you this evening. It's going to be work hard, throw hard up against the Bush. And the Bush is currently in first place in Division D West, so this should be a pretty fun match to watch. Ragnarok, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine, Murda. Thanks for having me on the cast. I'm really excited to do this with you. Awesome. Yeah, I'm super stoked as well. Uh, your first time casting. Are your nerves getting to you right now? No nerves, man. No no more nervous than when I play support, so we'll put it that way. <laughs> uh, I'm nervous anytime I play with you because I know I'm about to get yelled at. <laughs> and no, man. It's all love. You know that. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, Host connection detected. Oh, another host Routing coming through. This one, Jousten. No. So the bush coming through with a bunch of viewers. Appreciate that. We do have the bush currently ready in the lobby, waiting to hear back from Work Hard, Throw Hard. Uh, but last night, Rag, BlizzCon tickets, my dude. Cannot wait, Murda. So for the folks that are watching, Murda and I have played in Chair League, and we played on Regen a year ago. And we actually met up IRL at BlizzCon, and we're going to do it again this year. So shout out, man. I'm looking forward to it. Super stoked. These teams are super stoked. They are ready. I'm launching us into the first draft. Map number one is going to be Towers of Doom. So uh, quickly, let me talk about the coin flip, ladies and gents out there in Twitch world. We had the Bush winning the flip and deciding to ban away Braxis Holdout. Work hard, throw hard, then ban away Dragon Shire. Here we are, map number one, it's Towers of Doom, and we will close out the night on Infernal Shrines. Uh, so, Rag, Towers of Doom, what's your meta here on Towers of Doom? So, Towers of Doom oftentimes requires really good macro play. You need to know when to prioritize things like camps, and you need to know when to rotate the different bell towers. So, on maps like this, there's oftentimes mm -hmm. a lot of sustained fighting that happens. That's probably why we see the Stukov ban. And for the folks that are watching, do remember that yesterday Stukov was nerfed. The cooldown for his Lurking Arm was increased to a baseline of 10, and it's now a 15 second cooldown if you take Lurking Arm at 1. So anyone that plays Stukov in this match will need to watch out, but it is banned here. I think that's the right ban. Yeah, uh, and that's why Rag is here as an analyst this evening, coming through with all these big support changes yesterday. We also saw changes to one of your favorites, Ana. Let's not talk about my favorite range minion. I think... <laughs> I think she's still okay. She's incredibly situational in the meta. And here we see a Lucio ban again, kind of getting rid of the sustain. Lucio is also very good with dive comps because he really empowers them to move forward with the team and can deny burst damage through his shield at level 10. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he was one of the only supports not touched yesterday. Is that correct? That is 100% correct. His kit did not change yesterday. Okay, so yeah, I casted a match earlier this evening between Jailbait and uh, a Greek Detective. Economy. Uh, I do appreciate that follow, Skalkaya10. Appreciate that. Uh, but they did run a Lucio in that match, and it was uh, it didn't work out for him. But you know, you got to see a Lucio because all these other supports are getting nerfed. That's right. So we have a first pick, Malfear, in here. He also did get nerfed. There's about a 10% reduction in his healing, and some of the damage. For his Moonfire and the Twilight Dream were also removed, but I don't think that still really removes too much of his power. His base kit is still incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. He can sustain through team fights. His Twilight Dream can single-handedly turn team fights. So I'm not very surprised that the that a work hard throw hard picked him first pick here. Yeah, especially um, synergizing all these healer bands and taking the one that they feel is their pick right off the top with their first pick. I like seeing that, and maybe they're living a patch behind with the Stukov Malfurion, but they got the one they wanted, and we'll see if it works out for them. Dahaka is the pick. One more left here for the bush, and it's gonna be another support. It's Rhaegar, so support's off the table now. Let's start looking at some other stuff. Very cool, and I really like the Dahaka pick on this particular map. You'll oftentimes see Dahaka just soaking top lane. Uh, you're going to see here Dahaka is going to match into that Sonya top lane. A very, very hard matchup. Uh, actually, they, for the Dahaka in some cases, Sonya can sustain pretty well through the wave and get healing off. Uh, and uh, we have a Graeming picked up as well. Um, hold on one second. People are saying your mic is super echoed. It might be something on my end. Hold on. Sure. 
Hopefully that fixed it. Should be good. All right. I don't think it's you. I think it's me. Maybe it's too loud. Hold on. Um, no worries. Dun, dun, dun. Remember that, a tad? I can't hear it. So on my end, it sounds good. On their end, they're saying it's echoed. Um, maybe should have cool. done a mic check, but we were so rushed. Sonya let's, Gray Mamer picked. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope that we'll, we'll find out in two minutes, right? You guys will have to let us know. So <laughs> Sonya Gray Main, pretty good on this map. The green main in particular is really great because you have the camps, the double camps in the bot lane, and that bot lane control on this particular map is critical. If you control that bot lane, you control the sappers, and it can oftentimes be really hard to get that back. So we see a Diablo ban on the side of the bush. Incredibly meta hero still. Uh, we did get an announcement today that a lot of his abilities, specifically around Firestorm, will be reworked, which is exciting. But he can be really terrifying to play into, especially once he reaches his level 16. Yeah, absolutely. And and of course, the Sonya pick up against the Dahaka, I think is a favorable matchup for her. Um, the only thing being different is Dahaka's got that global, and if a fight is breaking out on the bottom side, and they're up top, uh, it's going to really swing it in favor of the bush here. They're going to go with a double blind here, Johanna and Cassia, to deal with that Grimming. That is... An excellent, excellent pick. Johanna also provides additional wave clear for the mid and the bot lane in the event that the team decides to rotate. Cassia as well can also clear those waves, plus Rhaegar can help out with his lightning shield. So excellent, excellent picks here. It's a really great way to deal with that gray main. Let's see what they're going to follow up with. Wow. Kelton Kel Zod. freaking Zod. Uh, and Garrosh. Okay, so a meta tank making it all the way to the fifth pick. I uh, definitely like that. They have the Roots from Alfurian to combo alongside it. And Kel'Thuzad, this is a live or die hero. If they can play it, they can make it happen. And if it doesn't work out, this is one of those uh, assassins that like it's really risky to put in your composition. I agree 100%. And what's very interesting here is that the Johanna has her unstoppable every 20 seconds. Rhaegar also has a cleanse. So the team on the right, the bush, is actually well positioned to deny some of those combos late game. Especially when Kelpie Zod is looking to blow someone up with his giant spike. Uh, so and I'm it looks like I'm still echoed. It looks like you're still echoed. Let me... Maybe that fixes it? Can I still hear you? I can hear you perfect. Uh, maybe they can hear you? I, I might have fixed it? Maybe? Okay. Second time's a charm, right? I don't know. I, I really like this pickup. This is a Genji last pick. That adds kill potential to the poke that the Cassia can add here as well. So that kill through Zod, Grammy need to be incredibly careful that if they ever drop way too low, that we're going to have a big issue here. Oh, I think I figured out what was broken. Your mic should be working. Sorry about that. Oh, you figured it out? Okay. Uh, host yeah. Connection okay. Detected. All right. Routing hollow yeah. feed now. Uh, another host coming through. Scout Kaya 10 with this one. Appreciate that. Send out all the viewers this way. Should be a good match. Um, the Bush. They are leading Division D West up against the fifth place team. Work hard, throw hard. And Towers of Doom, map number one. Which team do you think has the better draft, Reg? I really like both of these drafts. I think the Kelpie's Odd is kind of a wild card here, and the execution has to be on point. However, the comp on the right, I think, for me, is a bit more favorable. The Indestructible, the Cleanse on the Rhaegar with the Burst Denial, and the Burst Damage Output with the Kill Potential from the Genji, I think, is much better in my opinion so i'm gonna give the draft to the bush but it's very close to me i really like the way the draft evolved and i think the both teams did a tremendous job all right so let's Prepare introduce this team battle. on the left Heroes. it is the fifth place uh competitors from division d west work hard throw hard we have mike check on the garage Dr. Hots on malfurion spaghetti eddie spaghetti rather on kelthazad we have FR Feedlord on Greymane, what a name, and uh, Hash Rain on the, seconds. what is that, Sonya. Awesome, and on the right Five, we have The Bush four, with 
Ezlin on Dehaka, Rune on Genji, Ziltoid playing that Rhaegar, Squirtle playing Johanna, and Joustin playing our Cassia. Let's take a look at these level 1 talents. Uh, Unrivaled Strength from Garrosh, not looking to get his uh, Q quest going. Tough as nails for Sonya. Uh, we have Blighted Frost from Kel'Thuzad. On the other side, we see Tisha regens to play from Dahaka, not going for speed here. Agile dismount, what a swap uh, flip there by Garrosh. But Swift Strike back to safety is Genji. Uh, we also see the Hold Your Ground from Johanna and Charge Strikes from Cassie. I really like those picks. One sort of talent adjustment that's obvious to me here is that Rhaegar actually took the totem talent at one. A lot of times you're going to see the Rhaegar actually take the speed, which will help him go across this map, especially on something like Towers of Doom, where those rotations are incredibly important. And you also see the teams here doing a four-man rotation between mid and bot, which is the general recommended approach to playing this map. Absolutely. Uh, up top, it looks fairly even between Dahaka and Sonya thus far. Wave clear is in favor of work hard, throw hard, but we do see that uh, the bush is leaving Cassie at mid to get that wave cleared, and maybe a little bit of soak missed there by work hard, throw hard, and it is a slight level lead, ever so slight, for the bush currently. Take a look at what the bush is doing here. At exactly one minute, the Merc camp spawns on this map. That Rhaegar, just a few seconds after the camp spawn, was right there. And the blue team is looking for the invade, but they're too late. Oh, walking right into a garage, though, is that Rhaegar. Kael'thas not connecting on his route, but does end up cleaning up the kill on a Rhaegar. That's first blood, and it's going over to work hard, throw hard. That was excellent positioning for that garage. He was there expecting the camp to be taken, and that Rhaegar was absolutely close. Uh, so they gotta wait for some healing to get back here. Johanna's playing pretty far up front with like 40% health right now. Taking some damage from uh, Greymane there as well. Pops an iron skin to go to the well. And Rhaegar is finally now showing up Ziltoid on that Rhaegar. Gonna have to heal up his members here on the bottom side. And rotations are continuing from work hard, throw hard. And now they have that slight lead that I mentioned earlier. I think the blue team right now, Work Hard Throw Hard, is on the rotation. Really good and stoppable from the Johanna there, avoiding the roots and the Kelpie Dot Slow. Squirtle is doing an excellent job at knowing exactly when to use those. And it looks like we have the Echo back. Um, Murda, you have an Echo. Well, well, geez. Hopefully, Echo. Oh my god, what the heck? What is going on? I didn't even touch anything. Um... <laughs> Hmm. I, I promise I didn't sabotage you. Uh, I, I sabotaged myself. Uh, yeah, so we have the team on the top here. Cassie is channeling the top right altar, which the is perfect. The teams on this particular first altar phase normally do contest the middle, which is good. So here we expect the teams to rotate to the middle. Yeah, and... Genji getting really low here. I really like that they had the Dahaka up top brush stock down, make this fight happen, and now they have a huge contention over this bottom altar here. And Sonya now showing up. Will she find that Genji? But Genji switch strikes forward, finds a kill onto Malfurion, but they trade it out. Genji's also going to fall there, one for one so far. Uh, throwing back there is Joustin by the Garage, and he's going to fall. Kel'Thuzad picking up two in this fight, and a lot of damage still available if they want to find it. There's a stun onto the Rhaegar. Can he get killed by Sonya? Chain's missing from Kel'Thuzad. They're not going to connect on that kill. That was so incredibly Heroes close, scene. and the gray main does go down here. Had that Kel'Thuzad combo hit, they would have killed him, but will Dehaka pay the price here? Does uh, he have his burrow? And a pause. I'm going to reset this one more time. Hopefully that fixes my echo. I don't know why. I'm really confused why it's echoing, because I didn't touch anything. I just did a cast earlier. It was fine. But uh, let me switch us back to the cams for a sec while we're waiting sure for thing. this pause. So, so far in this game, uh, dead even on experience. They're still fighting over this bottom uh, altar. And we have kills 3-2 to two in favor of work hard, throw hard. Uh, Kelth is odd. Um, really, the man of the game so far, master of the cold dark at 7 stacks, looking to get his blight to 30. But so far, only four minutes in, not too bad. Seven stacks. Teams are ready, Murda, if you want oh. to unpause. Okay. Oh, sorry. Can't read. 
Three, <laughs> two, one. And the Dahaka does burrow. I think Sony's got this though. No way. I cannot believe that the Haka escaped. That should have been a kill here. And the fight is still continuing. Do you remember that the longer this fight goes on, the more kill Kuzad can stack, so it's in his favor. But I think the red team here will be victorious and push the blue team off point. The Raven Lord, the yeah, and they end up getting it. The bush grabs it away. They have a four point lead on the core. And as before, we see them putting a heavy prioritization onto these siege camps and they're gonna grab theirs right away. Sending the Haka back up to the top to deal with Sonya. And I like the pressure. They're keeping the pressure on this bottom lane. They lost their wall, but they're going to try to get it back here with these sappers. I love the absolute perfection and timing that the bush has on these merc camps. That consistent pressure is going to add up. Hopefully they can escort these pumpkins into the opposite wall and get some additional pressure. But they have to watch this framing flank here. Yeah, Greymane looking the flank, and the Kelpazod's there as well. Is he going to look for some chains here? Johanna's very close. Uh, the chains, are they coming? The root's not connecting. He's still looking for more. He does find it. It's a chain that gets the final hit with the Greymane. Uh, but... E e excellent kill there. The team actually waited for the Unstoppable to be over before they popped that slow combo. So, excellent use for that by the Kelpazod. So let's take a look at some of these talents. I haven't looked at them in a minute. We have Into the Fray from Garrosh, uh, Life Funnel from Sonya. So she's looking to get a lot of cues off. Uh, Glacial Spike, of course, from Kel'Thuzad. Uh, Wise and Duelist from Greymane. Uh, Feeding Frenzy from Dahaka, which I actually, we didn't talk about Hero Stalker at level four. Uh, up against a lot of this uh, heavy melee from the bush, or excuse me, on the side of uh, Work Hard, Throw Hard. Uh, he's gonna get a lot of value from that Hero Stalker, getting a lot of extra essence that this is only a patch or two old that Dahak has had this talent be reworked like this, and it could come into play here to be pretty effective for them. I agree completely. In looking at the support talents and the damage talents, everything else looks good for you. Cassia has a charge tricks at one with the reach for sustain and versus surge of light. I love the healing totem sustain for the Rhaegar, and we have a team fight about to start. Team fight about to break out. Toss back is Johanna Pops. Iron skin early in this fight. Protect was also played by the Genji. Roots are not connecting on anything. Glacial Spike was looking for something, and they end up finding Johanna. But falling low is Sonya. Genji trying to harass. That's Rune on the back end. And Sonya is one of those guys that, like, is really tough to kill, and it's not going to work out for him. Genji falls. Malfurion now the one below 30% health. Has a Q on him and lands a root onto Cassia. Look at this. They find the kill. Cassia is down. Uh, what a play. What a play. And Glacial wow, that Oh, wow. I thought the Glacial Spike was about to connect, but it didn't. Uh, that's incredible. Oh, my God. Someone shoot me. I didn't switch the game screen back. He missed all that action. Ah uh, man, this this this, this cast is all over the place right now, Rag. Right? NA production, everyone. I, so. I, <laughs> I bring you in for one cast and I ruin everything. Mike's echoing, screen's not on the right screen. Oh my god. Um, Classic murder, everyone. Classic murder. <laughs> so the bush ends up taking the bottom shrine after what we promise you is was an incredibly chaotic fight. You will have to take our word for it. Healthy yeah. God had an excellent denial there with his ultimate, with the Shadow Fissure, denying that take, and it gave them just enough time to turn the fight. Uh, and I do want to say uh, thank you for the raid and the host from One Mega Man fan and Swing Time. Lots of viewers here to see me. Absolutely, I get one F word per game. Fuck this one up. But uh, here we go, Johanna taking all the damage right now, but it's actually work hard, throw hard in a weird spot, getting blinded by Johanna, condemned connecting onto all of them. That's a double kill so far, Ancestral Heal was on point, and Rune will survive. Genji getting some kills there on the backside with his team, and looking for more. There's Kel'Thuzad and Eddie Spaghetti. See ya later. That is a quad kill for the bush, and they're looking to move on this map and get some structures down. That chain lightning absolutely destroyed the other team. They were all in one area and it completely took down the life bars. This Cassia is playing out of her mind. Uh, they do have one pumpkin sapper connect, but now no minions available to continue their siege onto that bottom tower there. 
Uh, and we do have altar spawning. Uh, it's going to be top left and top right. Dahaka and Sonya already up there. Keltazad moving next to his. That's Eddie Spaghetti. And let's see if they want to play aggressive with their level 13 talents here, Red. A great uh, chain there after his glacial spike from Keltazad not finding any follow-up damage. Sonya looking for the flank. Has a wrath pop, but Keltazad is going to fall on the left side of that fight. Great tongue. Onto Malfurion and finishing it off with some charge strikes. And the Genji. Oh, but he's in the bell tower shot range. Oh, my God. Genji falling even with this protect up. They get the the altar and now moving to the other side is the Haka, but they, they lost so their Genji, but again. two for one, I'll take it, and two altars, cool. worth. I really like what the Bush did here. They played into their advantage. Right before this fight, it was 13 to 11, and they pushed into the enemy bell tower, or the altar, knowing that they had that advantage. They got eight total points here, and now they're pushing top lane Murda. Yeah, pushing top lane, getting these sappers. The Haka's here cleaning up the wave. Which is actually, if if I'm work hard, throw hard, I'm sending my Greymane down to finish off that tower in the bot. Let's see if he's going to move that way. It does look like he will. Uh, FR Feedlord moving down here with Kel'Thuzad. They might try to get this down. It's only sitting on a thread. Uh, they are going to lose a boss here because the bush is on it. But I like getting this tower, the aggressive play here, and setting up for the next altar phase. They're going to have an additional shot if they can hold it. I agree 100% Murda. As I mentioned before, we entered the game. This bot lane has the most value because of the double camp here. And the, uh, the blue team, work hard, throw hard, is invading the enemy camp. They have to be careful though. Yeah, they're trying to invade it and they know they're here. The bush is trying to move in. Let's see if they can find the angle. Johanna condemning onto Garrosh and Malfurion. And here comes Genji. Dragon Blade intact. Fighting to kill onto Greymane. And they're looking for more. There goes Garrosh on the backside. It's still Genji trying to harass down this Malfurion. A Twilight Dream is going to send him back. And uh, yeah, I'm happy for them getting a two for nothing there. But Gre or, excuse me, Genji was still trying to look for more. He wasn't happy with what they got he wanted more the bush needs to take the bell tower back right now while the other team is down these sappers will help but they need that tower back to get the point value oh what a play by rune finding the kelthazad and ice block's not gonna save malfurion here doesn't have twilight dream this time he's gonna fall the silence is actually put onto sonya from the haka and there's an ancestral heal from rhaegar onto genji but um, more kills, another double kill there for Rune. And another aggressive play here for the Bush, taking away these sappers and grabbing the altar at the same time. This game is starting to really open up 36 to 12 for your division leaders, the Bush. This is spiraling out of control, Murda. With this bell tower taken from the bottom and a talent tier up, Work hard, throw hard is needs to find a way to get back into this game. They have to get the same talent here and try to take a fight to catch up. They are behind Caster Math, 24 points here. The game is still winnable. It is Towers of Doom. This is why we love this map. But they need to take a fight at even talent here. So safe soap. If you look at the top, is Greyman going down here, Murda? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Genji just did some agile stuff there to get into that battle. They find the kill. On to Greymane and Genji, very aggressive, still looking for more and not going to find it this time. But what a game that Rune is having on Genji. Uh, one for the ages so far, at least here in Division D West. And I, I fully expect them to use this level 16 talent advantage. Find it more. There it is. Swift Strike on to Kel'Thuzad, picking up another now 18 kills for the Bush and I don't know the answer if if you work hard, throw hard. How do you get back into this game? A throw on to Genji. He's got a swift strike out. There it is. Silence not connecting onto him. Not quite in time from Dr. Hots that time. This is really tough, Murda. In this time, had those kills not happened, I think the teams could have gotten 16 before this altar phase. If the bush gets this all three of these altars, the game the is Raven over. Lord. That would be a total of 12 shots, which is exactly what the bush needs to win the game. So can work hard, throw hard, defend all of the altars. Sonya is in the bot lane about to take the that altar. Now, and if that happens, it means that the game is saved. They do have another opportunity. Yeah, Curse Bullet onto Genji. I think Ancestral's available, not being used quite yet. Ziltoid holding back because he knows Genji is very agile in here. 
There's the Haka looking to get his Hero Stalker stacks to get some extra essence. Lands a tongue onto Malfury. And remember, he does not have Twilight Dream. There's a Warlord's challenge out from Garrosh looking to stun some members. But oh, it's Johanna pushing forward with the team, fighting to kill onto Garrosh. And they're looking for more. They get the Greymane. On the backside, Genji's looking to kill Keldazad. He does. And I don't think Phylactery was completed yet. No, it's not. So Keldazad is still going to be dead. One away from his Phylactery being complete. And this is going to be a double altar cap for the bush. Putting work hard, throw hard at four points on their core. They are in... They are the same talent tier now, Murda. There is still a chance for work hard, throw hard to get back into this game. It will be tough. They need to take a team fight. They need to make sure they have all their ultimates up. The boss is back on the map in 40 seconds. That is a win condition for the bush. Will they go for that boss? Oh, man. Um, I We can't see what the next shrine pattern is going to be. Um, whoa, what a crazy fend around the wall there. That was awesome. I don't know if you that saw that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it looks like a double altar is coming up next. I want to say thank you for these... Uh, bits coming through Zunicorn throwing some at us saying please bring back cams too much gameplay and uh, Nem Avenger says murder cam Craigasm. Okay, so you guys like the cams. That's all right Well, we'll get you cams after this game. Let's finish this one up the bush one level away from their storm tier talents Bot lane is three pumpkins for them. They're looking to work down this bottom fort uh, yeah, this is really like the positional advantage just having this lane so aggressed by them. All five members here. Greymane's up top. I think he's trying to get that tower down so they're not on match point, but he's not going to be able to get it in time, Rag. That's right, and you see here the bush is approaching level 20 here. I don't think they're going to get it. Look at this team fight. Is Garrosh going to survive? Garrosh goes down, Murda. He goes down and the Hawk is looking for more silence onto Malfurion before he can get a Twilight Dream off the charge. Uh, excuse me, the Lightning Ball was trying to bounce off Malfurion but didn't quite get the kill. There's Cursed Bullet and a combo out from Kel'Thuzad but Ancestral Yieling will bring Johanna back to life there. Looking on the backside, Genji, he gets Twilight Dreamed and killed but they kill down the Kel'Thuzad. Uh, did he have Phylactery this time? I think he does. Is he going to come back? They're looking for kills. just... They need one ultra murder. One of them could peel and just go to get that bell tower and win the game. So Man. all the red team needs to do is just hold them off and block them. And uh, Dahaka is looking for it, but a great uh, ultimate there from the Kel'Thuzad keeping him at bay. Sonya falling low and dying. The lunge in from Rhaegar is just enough. And the mid side, Cassie got the cap. Joustin ending this one in an expected fashion, I think, with the lead they had in that game, Rag. I think that makes perfect sense to me. That Greymane had such a hard time engaging into that team with that double blind. The synergy that the Bush showed was <clears> on point and they controlled the macro the entire game. They were a talent tier up almost every single level starting at 10 and work hard, throw hard just could not catch back up. So uh, let's look at this match summary brought to you by Nexus Gaming Series. And we have Greymane leading the way for work hard, throw hard. But that wasn't nearly enough to keep up with Cassia and Genji. These two comboed in for 15 combined kills. Rune leading the way with 10. Uh, had a lot of deaths. Played that really aggressive style. But I think it ended up playing to their favor, Rag. I agree 100%. The zone control and kill potential of the bush here was just way too much. The back line, that Malfurion and Kel'Thuzad, once that Genji is on you, you need to make sure to protect them. And Garrosh tried his absolute best, but it just wasn't enough. So ladies and gents, we're gonna take a short break and be heading over to Infernal Shrines for game number two. That was the bush taking game number one on Towers of Doom. We will be right back in about four minutes, so hang tight and we will see you there.
All right, ladies and gents, these are the cams you've been waiting for. Murda and Rag are back, ready to attack. And we have teams in the chat ready to go. I'm not gonna waste your time. Uh, we're gonna get right into it. This one is going to be Infernal Shrines. Rag, tell me how terrible I am at being a caster and then tell me what we're gonna be looking for in this map. I love you, Murda. I just up to you. Notice me, Kappa. Let's oh, start there. oh wait, yeah, rag for the sub. I talked to you off channel, uh, but yeah, appreciate that one. Did you? <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh look, there's a notification on stream. How funny. Infernal Shrines is where we are, folks. <laughs> this is a wonderful, wonderful map. Again, very important with the macro. You generally have a solo laner top on this map and a foreman that rotates mid and bottom. This particular map with the objective it's all about zone control and making sure that you have a composition that can sustain through that fight. So I'm thinking of things like Dukov that do area denial and of course he's banned. Other strong supports on this particular map could be Alex Straza for her Dragon Queen. Anyone that just makes going into these corridors incredibly difficult for the enemy teams. Yeah, I think we should talk about uh, the Bush banning away Lucio for the second time tonight and work hard throw hard banning away Stukov for the second time tonight So this is a very familiar draft so far uh, The first pick last game was Malfurion. So does the Bush want to take that hero? Um, again, we talked about the draft in game one how all these supports got changed around a little bit and no They want the Diablo. I like this pick here this is one of Diablo's best maps. The geometry he has <clears throat> in and around these shrines are so close. If you are for a fraction of a second in front of any of these walls, you will get comboed and you will get taken down, especially at level 16. And as Diablo builds his souls. Excellent pick here from work hard, throw hard. Counters to a Diablo could be things like a Malfeel, a Tychus. I think showing the damage right now is a bit too early. So let's see how they respond here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Garrosh still available. We saw him played in game number one by them. Uh, do they want to grab him again here? I don't think he played too bad. Um, they might want to look for a different mage this time to pair with it. I definitely expect them to grab their Malfurion right now. As we saw in game number one, they have a very high prioritization. No, I'm wrong. It's going to be a Kael'thas and a Blaze. So not what I expected at all. I absolutely do love those picks, so they're excellent on the map because this map is about wave clear. The four man needs to have the wave clear to rotate between mid and bot. That's what your Kelf is your Kelfy side. Your Kelf Thos will provide uh, the team. So and that blade Show will be in the in. top lane. A Rag. Deckard Kane. It's my first Deckard match. We did it, boys! We did awesome. it! Uh, pretty stuff. Uh, so Ezlin likes the Dahaka, plays it frequently, but wow, let's talk about this rag. Deckard Kane is going to be played uh, quite possibly one of the first times going to be played in NGS. Um, I, I don't know if any teams played it earlier this week, but definitely the first I've seen. Uh, I'm excited. I think he has a lot of area control, like you said, is his route that he can put out. Um, if in the right spot, especially on top of the shrine, this is Infernal Shrines, uh, could be pretty deadly if they have the right combination with it. Absolutely, and as we get into the game, once the draft evolves, <laughs> if you'd like, I can talk a bit about his talents. I did get a chance to play him yesterday myself for the first time in a ranked setting in Team League. I really like what he brings to this map in particular with the setups for his potions and the zone control. As a solo support, he himself if they go with the solo support, is incredibly powerful with CC follow. -up. So you have situations where you can throw out his scroll of ceiling, followed up directly by the Haradra cube, which is generally the combo. But if you have something like a Malfurion or a uh, Diablo charge to help set that up, that Decker can go to town and can just root that individual. So really really good on this map the zone control and cc he provides is phenomenal so we'll see how this deckard plays on this map jaina and malfurion are the bands i like this band from the bush taking away the support that we saw work hard throw hard wanted in map number one which is now putting them pretty deep on the support list and they're gonna go with a morales here uh and an etc as their tank so a bit of uh 
kind of wild card here, oh, Rag. Having Lieutenant Morales as your support, is this going to work out for them? Not anymore, Murda. If I was that Morales, I would be terrified by those last two picks. And yeah. that Kalthos as well. Uh, that Zeratul Genji are all about I'm dive in addition energy. to that Diablo. And I'll talk in a moment about why Deckard can be really good with dive pop. But we follow it up with the Kerrigan to end off the draft for work hard, throw hard. Yeah, uh, Kerrigan, obviously this is one of your better maps. But is it too little too late? Because Zeratul and Genji harassing a Morales on the... Oh my... Like, it's, it's all up to ETC. Can Mike check... Uh, keep them in the game. They have to peel for this Morales, and if they don't find that to work for them, it's going to be lights out because this is a deadly assassin combo from the bush, and I fully expect them to take advantage of it here. The one interesting thing to note, though, that kind of plays against the bush, the red team on the right, is that they have very little wave clear in the four man. Zeratul can go in and cue the wave, but it's not going to be nearly as fast as your Kael'thas W with Q, right? That will clear the wave pretty fast. If Kerrigan takes her cleave, that's going to help as well. The question I have, as I mentioned in the draft, is will the backline survive or work hard, throw hard? Can Prepare they survive that dive? Can they survive? Work hard, throw hard. On the left side of the map, we have FR Feedlore playing Kael'thas. Eddie Spaghetti on Kerrigan. Dr. Hots is going to be playing that Morales. Mic check. 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two on the ETC. And very suited for him to be playing that hero. And up top in the solo lane, we have Hash Rain on Blaze. And the red team, the bush on the right side. We have Ezlin playing the Dahaka. Joustin showing us his skills on Zeratul. Rune playing the Genji. Ziltoid playing that Deckard. We'll see how he plays. And Squirtle playing that Diablo. Squirtle McTurtle on Diablo. Of course, choosing Devil's do here. Scroll of Identify for Deckard Kane. Uh, once again, we see Tissue Regen from Dahaka. Um, this is a talent here. Neural Stimpak for the Blaze. Uh, there's a flip by Diablo, but ETC is able to power slide through him right there. Not finding the combo is Kerrigan, but half health is Diablo. He's got some of these uh, potions dropped by Deckard already that he's able to walk over. So he's going to be healthy, and Ziltoid already doing a good job getting them down early so his teammates can move back onto them when they take the damage. This is why Deckard Kane is so much fun. But walking into a bush is Deckard Kane. ETC just going to face check him, uh, and, or face melt him rather. And face checking was Decker. <laughs> Same thing, right? Same thing. A lot yeah. of supports do that. So uh, one interesting th thing that I'm seeing here, uh, you know, Decker can use his abilities for that wave clear, with uh, which which is probably okay. We have to watch the engage here on that Genji. Yeah, power slide onto him. He does have a swift strike away. Rune getting to safety, very comfortable on this hero. Uh, of course, we saw game number one getting the ten kills. Uh, we'll see if he can get some more of them here, but uh, a little bit of damage, about 50% health for him so far. But again, these potions all around the map, he's, all he's got to do is walk over to him and he's back to health. Absolutely, and that level 1 talent of Deckard, Scroll of Identify, it takes 20 different heroes or 20 different procs of that. Once you hit it, you will reduce the armor of anyone caught in that by 15 for a total of 4 seconds. So. The Deckard should be prioritizing those scrolls right now in this four-man rotation to get that quite possibly even before the second shrine. So you yeah. see here he uses it and he gets the one root. Yeah, totally worth it already. ETC uh, not taking any damage from it. But like you said, that is going to be a huge turning point, a late game sort of build for Deckard Kane. And if they can get that, especially on top of the shrines when the battles start, um, yeah, I, I do agree, and at level 4 he gets the talent that his Roger Cube is going to reduce the cooldown on it, which I would fully expect him to be taking, Rag, right? That is actually at level 7. Oh, 7, okay, at, 7. At level 4, I would actually expect him to take Ruby, and he puts Potion of Shielding, okay. So why I would take Ruby here is if you proc that Ruby with a dive comp onto their enemy team after you shield them, you're going to spawn a ton of lesser shielding potions. I think the shielding here is being used to help sustain that Zeratul and the Genji, but with dive comps, I think if you provide that follow-up, knowing that they have a Kerrigan Blaze ETC, I think there's 
potentially better value with that ruby pick, but I'm okay with the potion of shielding here. A little extra shielding. I think they have a few squishy targets in Zeratul and Genji. Of course, protect for Genji kind of keeps him alive and blink for Zeratul, but shielding never hurts anyone. Uh, and for himself, too. He gets the shields if he drops them in a retreat. You know, Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not too mad about it. And I really love the fact that the bush took that camp in the bot lane. There will be pressure building there. The Diablo does get a combo on that ETC, but does not capitalize it. Kahaki getting a bit low. That combo, that scroll of ceiling from the Deckard does miss, but that's okay. He can get that set back up with his trait. Yeah, Dahaka took a lot of damage early. Had to pop his essence, so doesn't have any here. Great stun there by Blaze and a follow-up by Kerrigan. Looking to finish off Diablo. Will she find it? ETC is very close to the power slide available. On the backside of the fight, it's Genji killing that Morales. That's what we talked about during the draft. You got to be able to feel for it. But ETC was uh, chasing down a kill on Diablo. Never got it. So it's a one for nothing. First blood going over to the bush. And Squirtle is still alive on that Diablo. Still healthy. I cannot believe Diablo survived that. Just constant pressure and CC. The CC chain from the side of Workout Drill Hard was on point. Kerrigan combo, ETC slide, Blaze stun. And here we see the teams engaging again. Yeah, big engage there by Diablo. Not able to get much follow up from his team. They're working on this shrine. It's 33 to 30, very close. Kerrigan's going to try to be the answer for work hard, throw hard. Uh, and there she is diving in, looking to stun. Connects onto Diablo. Not quite enough. She's having to retreat now. And there's uh, the full force of Dahaka spreading some swarm all over him. And they end up winning the shrine, the bush, but. Uh, they didn't get the kill on the Kerrigan. I would have loved to see them finish that. They didn't able. They weren't able to land a tongue or anything on it. Uh, but Punisher worth, and it is an arcane Punisher, one of the best. I agree 100%. I think if there was just a little bit more focus on the side of work hard, throw hard, the blue team, they could have netted those kills. They have shown already that they have the kill potential, and they do have the CC chain to lock someone down. That Diablo could have down a couple, or gone down a couple of times here, but you see. Uh, the bush is pushing in, they take down the entire fort wall, and now they're working on the fort. Yeah, I think they might be able to get this. We'll see if ETC can power slide on top of this. Uh, okay, so they save the fort, they find a Genji, but they now- Ooh, 122 health left on him, able to survive. Uh, but, oh, that was pretty close. If level 7 talents are picked up, uh, finally we see it here from ETC picking up Echo Petal. Uh, Maybe they could have jumped in and finished that. I don't know. It was, it was pretty close. Both teams taking their siege camps now. Yeah, Decker did actually cast a Haradra cube there. That cube was enough to help the team disengage, and the root, the scroll, actually hit the Morales. So great play there by the Decker, helping his team escape, helping that Genji escape, and it looks like he's being cheeky and going for that keep the keep the four. And there we go. Yeah, we know Rune likes to play aggressive. The five deaths in game one. But uh, looking at the kill count, he already has the kill here in game number two. So 11 on the night for him. Uh, and I, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of this player. Definitely confident on the hero and making it happen. Um, the question is, what ultimate will Deckard Kane go into? Is it going to be Lornado or is it going to be stay a while and listen, Reg? That's a wonderful question. I'll be honest with you. I've had issues with Stay A While and Listen into comps like the one of Work Hard, Throw Hard because you have things like Kerrigan, uh, Morales who can stun, you have Kelty Zod. Literally every single person on that team has a way to stop Stay A While and Listen. So actually, I would use the Lornado there to help disengage the team or to help split them from a chaotic fight, especially in these tight corridors. We have a fight breaking down bottom of it. Yeah, this is a great opportunity, but the level 10s are finally picked up here for the bush, and they're trying to find a kill onto Morales. They do get it. Genji's pretty deep, gets stunned by Kerrigan, and Rune has poison damage on him, will fall. It's a one-for-one one Genji for Morales. His camp's still here, and Diablo is looking like he still wants it, but Eddie Spaghetti, no fear on this man. And looking to jump in. He's got his Ravage on him and it's gonna cost him his life. Garrigan has fallen and now it's possibly Kael'thas in trouble because Zeratul's harassing him on the backside. ETC's also here taking some damage against Tongue by Dahaka. And that able to- Tornado, so close, Murda. It was uh, so close to hitting. Oh uh, yeah, that was really close to finishing him off. Didn't get it. Now low on mana with a shrine spawning. We have 
uh, the Deckard Kane going back. Looks like Zeratul might have to do the same. But they are going to get this Cosmo Camp on the bottom side before any of that goes down. Um, Tens picked up for both teams. Let's look at some of these talents. Mosh Pit for ETC. We have Phoenix for the Kael'thas. Stim Drone for Morales. Maelstrom for the Kerrigan. And there it is, Bunker Drop for Mr. Blades. I really love what Work Hard, Throw Hard did here. They took that camp right at the end, right before the Shrine spawned, forcing the Dahaka to stay in the top lane and clear that camp so it doesn't get value. I think what the blue team needs to do here is force in knowing that they're playing 5v4, same talent tier, given that Dahaka's top. Yeah, Dahaka's top for now. He's waiting for his brush stock opportunity. Will he find it? Got some potions being laid down by Ziltoid and that Deckard Kane. Diablo's the one taking damage here. Squirtle getting stunned again here, this time by Blaze. The root connecting from Deckard, and they finish off Morales early in the fight. But she, get, she did get the Stim Drone out onto Kerrigan, and she's about to kill the Zeratul. He blinks away. 73 health. He's now inside of his uh, Mosh Pit. It was also connecting, uh, but the in invisibility got the Zeratul away. Um, so wonderful disengage there, and two for nothing for the bush, and control with his shrine. The Lornado doing work there, Murda. That Lornado was cast right into that left poke, choke point, just knocking all the members out. That Deckard is out of position. He does get stunned by that Kerrigan, but because he's Deckard and he's invincible, he can just get away just fine. <laughs> yeah, the alt cast on potions is amazing, especially paired with the armor like you saw him take. Um, I'm liking the play from Zoltoid so far, and kind of excited to implement some Deckard into some of my strategies back with my team later on. I agree completely. The Deckard can set up the team fight, and again, as I mentioned before, is very good for that setup. Your team does have to know how to play with him, as he does get 50% cooldown reduction when someone, at least one person, baseline, is around his aura. So the team needs to play around him. Likewise, he needs to be close enough to his team. That is part of the risk we take by taking him, but the risk in some times is good and worth the reward. Yeah, short cooldown on that Lornado. We'll see if a play comes out here. There's the Punisher jumping over the wall onto ETC, but Morales is there with heals for him. He's not going to take much damage. Uh, again, Deckard looking for this Lornado, it looks like. Stepping forward right here. Uh, going to cast his uh, little triangle. What's that one called again? That is called the Scroll of Ceiling. Scroll of Ceiling, and it's going to connect, and they're going to get the kill onto Morales. Genji is the next to fall though, it's a one for one here in this fight. The Punisher about to fall and the Maelstrom is out from Kerrigan. She's looking for some blood and she they end up finding the kill onto Zeratul. And now the stun combo from Kerrigan keeping back Diablo. Squirtle falling very low and likely will fall and there he goes. The Lord of Terror is sent straight back to the pits of hell. That's a short cooldown from him. He did have souls and will be returning right now. But he's got to stack up again, Rag. That could be pretty big. He's got to find a way to get those souls back. Absolutely. And I actually think the play there was to take the keep while I'm back. I do think that the bush did get a little greedy there. Those kills alone did get work hard, throw hard back into the game. And the teams are now at even talent tiers. So when you're faced with that dilemma or that decision, oftentimes backing off and not giving the game back to the other team is the best decision. The teams are getting their, their composure back and focusing again on the macro elements. You see work hard, throw hard is on the bottom camp and an early camp taken in the top right by the bush. Yeah, the hockey grabbing that one and it looks like the Khazras are also out, but the neutral Khazras taken away by work hard, throw hard. They want to be aggressive. They want to find a fight before the bush is level 16. And they're going to pressure down this bottom wall, trying to match some of the sieging that's already been done in their bot lane. But here's Genji on the flank, jumping forward. There's the Haka brush stalking in, looking to find a tongue. He finds a silence onto the Morales. Not able to do much right now is Dr. Hots. This doctor could fall, but it's Rune, the one falling even lower. Genji very low. He's a swift strike away from killing that Morales potentially but not going to be able to get it. Kerrigan's here looking to find him and Swift Strike back to safety. There's some potions for Genji. And this is now the Kerrigan show this choke point with the Mosh Pit jumping in, getting the stuns going off. Diablo is at 25% health. Blinking away is Zeratul. He's scared right now. The stun connecting on Diablo. Eddie Spaghetti, you can forgetty about that one. Diablo has fallen with a full cooldown and that's going to be 35 more seconds till he respawns. So this is a big opening right now, Rag, for uh, Work Hard Throwar to get back in this game. 
this Kerrigan is playing out of her mind, not missing any combo there. The Morales, though, is going to go down because that Genji is hashtag Overwatch. Hashtag Overwatch indeed, Morales playing a little bit too much with their life there and uh, cost her that one. 16s are picked up by the bush. 15 and a half currently for work hard, throw hard. They do have a shaman camp available. Looks like they're going to start working on that. Will Genji and Zeratul join this fight here? We're going to walk into the ETC. The power slide is going to connect onto him. There's a face melt, not going to back swift strike away. Runes back to safety. Shaman camp should be able to be taken by Kael'thas here. And it will to Haka, though, playing very aggressive on the front line. Trying to get his team here. Silence connecting on the Kael'thas, and that's a kill. On the backside, it's Zeratul taking out Kerrigan. And now ETC getting flipped by Diablo. Looking to find the damage is Genji on the blaze. He's at 10% health. Drops a bunker. He's going to sit down here, but the whole team ready to swarm from the bush. X-Strike looking to finish the deal and doesn't get it. Blaze back to safety. That was really greedy, Murda. We know that work hard, throw hard was not 16 yet. They had that camp. They saw the Genji coming in. They needed to immediately disengage from that camp. They just, in addition to pushing the experience bar further to 20 in the direction for the bush, now they, you know, they lose that fight. The bush does get a head start on the shrine in the top. And it's going to be tough. It doesn't look like any ultimates were used other than that bunker, which is up. So work hard, throw hard, can still push into this. They still can take the shrine. Uh, they have a lot of work to do. Already down 23 nothing. Here comes ETC running in. Will he find a mosh pit? Uh, got interrupted, so it's on a 10 second cooldown. Rune falling low on Genji, very low. Maelstrom doing a lot of work with that. Uh, Phoenix by the Kael'thas as well. And two ultimates down, but the mosh pit's still available. Uh, will Mike Check find it here? He's gonna have to dodge that uh, seal there, but he does slide through. He still has it available. Still looking for it is Mike Check. Can he find it? He's right on top of you, and there it is—a three-man mosh pit. And uh, oh my God, the kills are coming in. Diablo and Genji are gonna fall. Ziltoid might be next. Decker Kane. See you later, friend. And that is a triple kill for work hard, throw hard. Uh, potentially getting themselves back in this game. Kerrigan's going to be the one in the shrine. And sieging forward, I really like this out of them, is the four man now for work hard, throw hard. They're going to set up this lane and make sure this Punisher is going to be leaping over a key wall. This is the exact thing you should be doing. With the Kel'Thas Siege Murda, you, the top team, this four man needs to continue pushing in. You are paving the way for that Punisher to push onto this keep wall and hopefully the keep with all the siege that you have to bring and the CC chain. The Morales in that fight being critical and denying so much of the damage with her W talent, her safeguard, and preventing that blow up on their team. Excellent work by the support on Work Hard Throw Hard. The Punisher is pushing down the lane. It is frozen. That will play into the CC chain of the team on the left. Yep, and they do have Maelstrom and Phoenix back online. So look for some combination damage coming out from these assassins. Tunneling Claw is going to get the Haka away from this one. But there's the Phoenix. And there's Kerrigan popping Maelstrom. Looking to do some damage. Currently on top of three. There's a great Apoc to silence that fight out for a second. And falling first in the fight is Zeratul. Immortal leaping onto three. Kerrigan looking to combo off of it. Doesn't find it. But there's Genji looking to be aggressive. As we know Rune likes to be. Trying to get the kill onto Morales. She's very low and she will fall. But this keep is about to fall as well as the Frozen Punisher seals the deal there and a great retreat now i like seeing this they got what they wanted move away and find something around the map that is not falling to any kills here uh but they got what they needed rag what a great play through the fort through the keep with that play uh that set up after the triple kill earlier wonderfully done by work hard throw hard excellent decision making there by the team of work hard throw hard john cena mvp killing that zero tool getting that stun and the follow on three man stun that enabled the siege to happen by that kill cost great focus by both teams but the keep did go down we will now have consistent pressure from the top lane thankfully we do have a dahaka on the bush who can be in that top lane clearing that camp or clearing those uh catapults 
Uh, currently, Dahaka picking up that Shaman Camp that will also help against all these Catapults pushing down the lane on the bot side. We see Zeratul and ETC spotted and gonna power slide through. Khazra is doing damage. Looking for the combo is Kerrigan, but the blink away by Zeratul was perfectly timed. There's Lornado to make sure no one will move forward through there. Um... 20 is very close for work hard, throw hard. I'm surprised they're looking for this fight right here, Rag. Uh, this could be trouble. They gotta wait until they get their 20s to take anything if, if, uh, if I'm the captain shot call on that one. Absolutely. This team is <laughs> one to two waves away from level 20. That Kilthos is getting engaged on good counter engage by that uh, Blaze. We do have the carrying combo missing there. The Diablo is being chased down, focused down. The Phoenix is on the ground now. Can that Tahaka survive in backline murder? And Maelstrom being played. There's a great APOC flipping over. Morales is down again. She has been targeted so many times in this game. First to fall in this fight, and they still don't have 20s. Moshpit connecting onto the Haka, but Lord Nato gonna cancel that one out. Very low on the backside is Zeratul, and walking right next to ETC. Will ETC see him? No, he's invisible. And Feedlord, you are about to die. Kael'thas is down, and the Bush, they find the fight they needed before Work Hard, Throw Hard hit level 20, and they're still looking for more. Rune chasing down ETC. Zeratul blinking forward, gonna put some of the damage onto him. ETC at 500 health, but will survive. Uses the tab. Jousting now, very low as well, but the potions from Deckard Kane with his level 20. And let's see what he went. Uh, he does go bottomless flask. Uh, wow, okay. They're gonna recharge, which is gonna be great on top of these shrines, because it's gonna set up early and then throw out all the potions, and they're never gonna leave the fight. Work hard, throw hard needs to be incredibly careful here. They have to be able to defend this without losing any members. The bush is going to be pushing onto the core. Can the blue team defend this murder? Uh, I don't know. ETC is looking for something. Does not have mosh pit. 55 seconds on that cooldown. Get silenced away by Dahaka. What a great isolation. But death mosh. He does have a mosh. Rag, this could be some kills. Kerrigan looking for him. There's Maelstrom finally being popped. They don't find any kills. ETC is the only one down. Joustin low. He will fall. That Zeratul out of this fight. Eddie Spaghetti with so much shielding. He gets a two-man stun. That one's onto Genji and Deckard Kane. Blaze missing the Jet Propulsion stun, but it's Deckard. Very low about the fall, and he does fall. Eddie Spaghetti finding the kill. Diablo's next to go down. It's a triple kill for work hard, throw hard. This is exactly what they needed. And with the Haka, the only one down here left, that is a quad kill. Make it count for work hard, throw hard, finding kills when it matters most with the shrine just now activated. Excellent defense here by work hard, throw hard. They are going to be moving to the shrine, Murda, which will be pushing through the mid lane. This is a little tough because you do notice that there is catapult pressure building, um, building on the bot lane. So this team will need to clear that eventually. You do notice that the bush is taking the counter camp. Uh, in the bot to help with that consistent siege, which will be annoying for this team. Uh, Kerrigan clearing up the bottom, now joining her tank ETC on the way back towards the mid. Actually, very far out. Looks like Rune might be able to engage onto Kerrigan here. Uh, and there he goes. Genji looking for this free kill, along with Diablo onto Kerrigan in the bot side. This is a big deal. The stun's actually to keep Diablo at bay. ETC trying to get here to save. Can the power slide come in time? There it is, power slide. And a uh, face melt knocking back those members. And Eddie Spaghetti making it back to safety. There's Morales, the healer, back up. And this is a mortar punisher pushing out mid lane. Going to stun out the Diablo. There's a, a jet propulsion and a power slide. What a sick combination of CC there by the tanks of work hard, throw hard. And this could be the moment we've been waiting for, Rag. They have a very healthy Punisher. They have Diablo on a full reset. 50 more seconds till he's back. And this could be a core rush after this keep goes down. That is bad news, Murdo. When teams are being seized like this, they have to play into their structures. We knew that Fort was going down late game, 22 minute Punisher. The Diablo needed to be further back and prepared for the CC chain. If one more goes down, that could be it. And again, he does go down the Lernado a little too late, Murda. A little too late. Again, the CC chain. You see Eddie Spaghetti really MVPing it up with this combo. Landing another two-man combo there. Uh, but they, they just got to work on this core. This core is very low. The mob's been connecting on two. They're going to get the kills. And Rag, they're going to get this game. Game number two to work hard, throw hard. There's no saving it now. Phoenix on the core and Eddie Spaghetti whacking away. GG, well played to both teams this evening. 
you know what, Murda? When we started this game, I doubted the Kerrigan. I doubted the ability for that Morales to stay alive. But as we approach that mid to late game, the two of them did an absolutely fantastic job. Look at the score here. Eddie Spaghetti with six kills and 12 assists doing 73,000 damage compared I, to that Kilthos. I wish we could see how many stuns he had too because towards uh, the later portion, uh, he started really connecting on a lot of those fights. And really, the one play that was so close there at the end was when Eddie Spaghetti got found by Diablo and Genji. And ETC, that was Mike Check making the play to peel for his Kerrigan to get him back to safety. That very well might have won the game for them and might have lost the game for them if Kerrigan died in that situation. Had that ETC not peeled for the Kerrigan like that, the game would not have gone that way, Murda. That staggered death is, I believe, is exactly what cost the bush that last game. So the series was tied one to one. Fantastic zone control and counterplay by the team. Work hard, throw hard. I'm incredibly impressed with what they were able to do there. Uh, so let me whisper someone from this team here. Uh, da, 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 da. Who are we looking for? Mike check, maybe? I think he was their acting captain of the evening. Of course, he's not in chat, and I can't message him from here. Uh, invite to party. We're going to pull in Dr. Hots, and that will have to do. It's the only one I have access to right now. All right, so I, we joined party voice, yes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see if anyone wants to join this. Cool. Uh, logged off. Okay. Well, looks like we might not get an interview tonight. That's okay. Maybe we can find someone from the other team? Sure, it was let's a, give it a go. It was a draw, so I don't feel too bad about it. Uh, see if Eslin's available. Interview? Try to get Eslin in here. I don't know. <laughs> well, we might not get it. That's okay. Almost happened to me last game too. Oh, nope. Eslin says sure. Let me nice. uh, join in game party. We have a private. Okay, um, got to wait for her to drop party, and then I will send her an invite. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you guys in chat are just now catching up. You saw the ending of that one. What a great finishing that was. Uh, Eslyn drops, and there she is. Make sure you right-click Eslyn, raise her volume. Hey, Eslyn, how's it going? Going pretty good. Can you hear me okay? I don't use Blizz voice as much. Yeah, yeah, I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yep, we're good. Awesome. All right, so I got my co-caster uh, Rag here. Uh, looks like you want to bring Ziltoid in as well. That's cool. Let's bring some yep. Ziltoid in here. Actually, I'll bring some Ziltoid in. I'm actually interested in talking to Ziltoid. Um, but let's talk about game number one. We were on Towers of Doom. That was your map selection, and you guys did win it. So... And it was in dominant fashion. What was it? 36 to 0 at the end, right? I think... I was pretty sure that they got some core shots from, like, beginning. I don't think it was quite 36 to 0, but... Um... Yeah. Uh, we... You know, Towers of Doom has been a strong map for us lately. Yeah, it... It, uh... It absolutely... Oh, there's Still? my mic. I have to push a talk, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's no, cool. It, uh, yeah, it was absolutely a, a great great game for you guys the dahaka as we know you love to play i see it ever almost every time that i cast you you're playing some dahaka which is also <laughs> my favorite he uh, hero as well but um you got value with it and your silences were on point throughout the night like they really were i missed a couple that i felt bad about but i appreciate you saying that they were on point it's something i've been practicing still needs more practice but uh yeah i hope hopefully to get it stronger you know i love the global pressure i love being able to help flank on team engages and do all that other fun dahaka rar predator bush stuff 
Rar. So I was really impressed by your team's ability to play into that garage. Oftentimes you oh. find people being really scared into that garage, but your Johanna, your flanks in particular, and you hitting the right target with the silence did enable to, uh, you know, just completely control that garage. Their taunts had some value, but you guys just completely wrecked them, especially when fighting in those close quarters. So really great job to you and your team on that map. You just had the the game and it pretty much snowballed in the mid game. Indeed, we, you know, we tried to keep the pressure up and we're talking to each other and there was one particular moment mid, like kind of like roughly mid fight, like on our first boss, where we just saw them answering pressure bot or pressuring bot and like, okay, boss is free. So we just went for it and tried to keep up the pressure from there. Excellent uh, decision making by your shot callers. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. There was a little bit of miscommunication on game two. So don't, you know, like, uh, Squirtle is our tank sub. These are the first games he's played with us in competition. And he did a f an overall fantastic job, but there were just a couple times when, uh, when maybe like a, a little bit of miscommunication happened. So we're still working out, you know, like trying to experiment with some things before um, full playoffs happen. So. <laughs> So you guys are you still are. sitting. You guys are still sitting first place in Division D West. So you still got to be feeling good about that. You get another point on the scoreboard this evening. Would have liked the three, and it was so would have liked the three, but we overstayed in like two fights, and that was, um, you know, this is our Top Gun High Five build with uh, Kenji and Saratol. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the game, uh, Squirtle and Rune were chasing down a kill on Kerrigan, and it was so yeah, they close. Yeah, almost got it. Uh, and oh. it would have been a kill, but it was ETC saving the day, and uh, really, it was just an outstanding play by the ETC. I, yeah, I, that I, death honestly, metal got value, didn't it? Oh, yeah, that too. Like, oh, man. I was like, well, ETC doesn't have a Mosh in this fight, and then he dies, and I was like, wait a minute, he does. Wait a minute, death metal. <laughs> Um, but I want to talk about uh, Ziltoid. We have you here in the chat. Um, Deckard Kane, give me your thoughts on this hero. That was a lot of fun getting to cast that. Can Ziltoid hear me? Do you have to talk enabled Ziltoid by any chance? Oh, I'm I have. Sure that you wait, on. I, I raised his volume. I might have had it too low. Yeah, I was like, I've been talking this whole time, and the thing has been. <laughs> I'd be talking this whole time. Uh, I'm like, why is everyone talking over me? I'm just like, this is kind of rude. I Well, I don't know why Blizzard, like, when <laughs> someone enters voice chat, they're, like, automatically, like, silenced. And I have to, yeah. like, manually raise the volume. So my first point I was going to make is ETC, you know, basically, you know, death mosh, another mosh pit, one another fight in another corner, and, you know, you could probably chalk up a good portion of that map to some really clutch <laughs> ETC play. Um, kind of put us, uh, that they gave him those opportunities to make those comeback happen, which was... Um, and then uh, Decker Kane, second time I've played him, second time I've lost with him on Infernal Shrines. Um, much happier with the play with him this time round. Um, you know, he can keep a team alive fantastically. If you saw, I was sitting at about 90,000 healing at the end of that game. So, um, you know, the roots, the, the, the heals, he's, he's got the whole package. There's, uh, lots of reasons to draft him. I think even in the current meta. Yeah, well, we definitely. Have... It's something we want to practice more with him on too. So that's like, let's do it <laughs> kind of game. Well, I brought on my support specialist here, Ragnarok, for the co-cast, and uh, he had a lot of thoughts on on how Decker can fit into this meta, but um, anything else you want to add to it, Rag? Yeah, I think you played, you know, Deckard really well there. Generally with dive comps, things like Ruby at four will get value. I think you, you know, into something like Kerrigan, Kilthos, uh, the Kanai's Cube, and the Lornado was a really good pick, but... Uh, generally speaking, you might want to think about drafting the Deckard with someone on your team that has CC. So your job is made a lot difficult because you have to land your raw rolls uh, followed with the Haradra cube. So I thought you did a tremendous job given what, you know, how your comp was built and the way it was kind of death folly with the, the backline engage with Zeratul and Genji. But yeah. I think you would have had a much easier time if you had something like a Garrosh or an Arthas Root or something that can allow you to just follow up with your CC versus being the one responsible for, you know, kind of doing that engage. 
Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It did take a little while to get the scroll of ceiling level one stacked up, mainly because of that. But uh, I, I was kind of anticipating a lot of engage from the enemy team, so I kind of figured that I was going to be able to predict where they were going to be. So I, I was okay overall with, with it. But I I, I do. Um, that's those are good ideas. Yeah, and I think you know you played him really well. I do love him on this map. I loved how you were setting up potions at the very beginning for your top laner for Dahaka. I'm sure Ezlin appreciated that as well, yep. I'm sure. Art Deckard. <laughs> Absolutely. So you played him great. This was my first time seeing him in NGS and I commend you for, you know, for taking that on. You did a great job. Sorry, I couldn't win with him for you though. That's all right, <laughs> no, man. Maybe next time. Don't give up. It's more on us. I was like, wait a minute. We don't have quite as much siege as I remember. Wait a minute. Death metal. Mm. So but, you know, you learn. It was a good learning game for us, and you know, props to work hard, throw hard, for sticking it out and coming back. Uh, so that's all I have for the interview this evening. Um, but I do want to give you guys an opportunity to give some shout outs to the chat if you have anyone watching, or maybe someone's going to watch this VOD later on. So the floor is yours, the bush. Okay, well, we start with our coaches, Skolkaya and to Wildcard, who are watching us and like to make fun of us whenever we do things they don't approve of. Uh, shout outs to Work Hard, Throw Hard, the other team. Shout outs to you two for casting us. Murder, it's great to see you again. Um, and shout outs to Kala Discord. And that's that's just kind of how the team got together. So, Ziltoid, anything you want to add? I did all those, plus uh, my own family for supporting me through playing a lot of this stuff and watching us and cheering us on. So. Uh, yeah. Basically and everyone on the that. team. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here for this interview. And big thanks to you, Rag, for hopping in on your first cast this evening. And if it weren't for me messing up some of the stuff in game number one, it would have been a pretty flawless cast, man. You did a great job. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the shout out. And GG's to you guys. You played incredibly well. Thank you for letting us cast this series. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. See you again. Later. Good night. See ya. Good night. Good night. All right. So NGS and all you viewers out there in Twitch, uh, this has been a Division D West matchup between Work Hard, Throw Hard, and The Bush, and it ended in a draw. Um, what a great game. What a great games. They were fantastic to watch. Very exciting to the end, especially there on Infernal Shrines. Um, Rag, any last words before I let you go here? I appreciate the opportunity to cast. You guys can find me streaming on Twitch, a variety of things, a lot of Hero League, some Team League, twitch.tv slash Ragnarok, two N's and two R's in that name, Fortnite and some other things to just kind of, you know, keep the salt levels down and make sure I stay uh, in check. Uh, I am a support main. If you guys have any questions on support or want to reach out, um, you guys can find me. Uh, I just threw a link in chat, so all of you, I command you to okay. click that and hit the follow button and check out one of his streams. He's a good friend of mine. If you want to uh, catch up with us, get a ticket to BlizzCon. We'll be out there. Um, I know there are a few salty people out there that probably missed some tickets last night. I know a few. Rag's cracking up, <laughs> but we'll get more tickets on Saturday. We'll figure it out. Uh, that's that it for tonight. Yeah, that's it for that's it for tonight. Uh, work hard, throw hard in the bush, and in a draw. We will see you next time. I don't have anything else on my schedule this week, but you know where to find me. Next week we'll be here. So close to getting that regen invitational bit goal completed. We're sitting at 82% right now. Um, so tremendous support from the community, and thank you to everyone. Ragnarok for the sub this evening. The donations from Nem Avenger, Zunicorn and uh, Skyarch, um, very much appreciated. All the hosts that came through, including a big one from one Mega Man fan and Jhow. Thank you so much for everything. And until next time, I'm Murda, that's Rag, and good night. Good night, guys. <laughs>